Thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, we continue our series on prayer, how to receive answers to our prayers, how to receive answers to our prayers. And today we come to part three of uh, uh, this message uh, that we started uh, a few weeks ago. And today I want to speak to you about conditions to answered prayer. What are some of the things that God looks for uh, and has taught us to align ourselves with him so that he will hear and answer our prayers. Now, we know this as believers, that prayer can change our lives. Prayer is the life wire to the believer's life, is the gateway to our victory. And prayer can change not only our circumstances, but can literally transform our lives. Uh, and it is the vehicle, the platform, the catalyst that God has given us as believers to commune with him so that he and us can be on the same page for him to accomplish what he sent us here to do. So prayer can change our lives. Let's look at some quotes from famous uh, Christians uh, who experienced the power and the effectiveness of prayer. Look at Dr. E.M. Bones, an author, attorney, priest, uh, and famous uh, writer who penned about nine seminal books on prayer. Here's what he says. Prayer honors God, acknowledges his blessing, exalts his power, and adores his providence, securing his help. Prayer honors God. When we pray, we honor God. Prayer acknowledges his being, his supremacy over our lives. Prayer exalts his power. Prayer adores his providence. We tap into God's provision, and it secures help from God to us. Uh, here's what uh, Dr. David Jeremiah, pastor, author, and evangelist, I say it's a prayer. I love this. It says, prayer is the way you defeat the devil. Prayer reaches the lost. Prayer is the way to restore a backslider, strengthens the saints, sends missionaries out, cures the sick, accomplishes the impossible, and knows the will of God. How about that? Martin Luther, uh, here's what he says to us about prayer, a priest, theologian, uh, author, seminal leader of the Protestant movement. He says this, none can believe how powerful prayer is and what it's able to effect but those who have learned it by experience. See, the only people who can really speak about prayer and what's done for their life are those who really practice prayer. Uh, Dr. F.B. Meyer says this about prayer. He says, the greatest tragedy of life is not on answered prayer, but on offered prayer. Says the prayers we don't pray uh, is the great mess in life. How about that? So prayer really does a great things for believers. And God has created prayer for us to uh, practice prayer, believe in prayer, that he will use that to be able to bless our lives. Here's what God says about prayer. I love this uh, prayer promise from God in Psalm 91. Uh, let's pour over it. Chock full of blessings when we come to him and pray in line with God's will and purpose uh, for our lives. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. And the key to this portion of scripture is that phrase, when they call on me, I will answer. So this is a, 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 a promise that is tied in with prayer. And God says, six I wills. He says, when you call on me, I will answer you. And here's what I will do. I will rescue you. I will protect you. I will be with you. I will honor you. I will reward you. I will give you my salvation. I will be with you in trouble. And God said, I will, I will, I will, I will six times in response to prayer. So prayer is really a big deal. As believers, our number one activity uh, ought to be praying to God and, and coming to God with our needs, uh, our requests, our prayers, thanking Him, uh, adoring Him, uh, worshiping Him uh, uh, through prayer and asking Him to do the things that He says He will do in our life. But I'm sure you've heard this, and as a pastor, I've heard this a lot, uh, that people say, well, I tried prayer, and it didn't work. I had a need. I prayed about it, uh, and nothing happened. Uh, 
and, uh, and perhaps in your life, uh, th- there's been situations where you've prayed about it and nothing happened. And some have gotten to this place where uh, they say, well, what's, what's the big deal about prayer? Is prayer fuss? Is prayer superstition? Uh, is it something that we con ourselves or, you know, we pretend that it works but it really doesn't work? What is really the big deal about prayer? And, and the bigger answer, the deeper answer is this, that does God promise to answer any prayer by everybody, any way, how? Does God really answer prayer? Whatever you say, whatever you want, whatever you come, if you just mouth it out and lift it up to prayer, is God really going to answer that? And the scripture is very clear on that, that the answer is no. <coughs> Excuse me, that God will not answer prayers said any way, anyhow, for whatever for situation. And, and, and prayer is clear about the conditions that God puts in place that when we come in agreement with him on that, he will base that to be able to answer our prayer. And there are five, to be specific, conditions in the Bible uh, that God says if we come and we align ourselves with him, if we come and we really connect with him in these key areas, he will hear and answer our prayer. That we can walk away with that expectation that, yes, I know I've prayed. Uh, it's in line with God's will. It meets the conditions of God. And I can be in a place of expectation that God will answer my prayer in his way, in his time, for his glory and for my good. Amen. Now, today we're going to look at two of these five conditions, God willing. Next week, we'll come back and then we'll look at the other three conditions to answer prayer. So what are these conditions? What are these conditions? The first is this. The first is this. For you and I to receive answered prayers I must have an honest relationship with God. Let me repeat that. That we must have an honest relationship with God. And and this is the key to answered prayer. That we've got to come, we'll be on the same page with God. That we've got to be in the will of God. That our lives must mesh with God for that to be a condition for answered prayer in our lives. Look at what Jesus says to us. I love this portion of scripture. John, John 15, 7. John 15, 7. Jesus is speaking. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Amazing portion of scripture. Now, this is important for you to understand. There are over 7,000 promises in the Bible. And many, many, many of these promises that God speaks to us has a condition or a premise tied in with that. So God says, here's what I'll do for you. But here's what you've got to do to be able to, to, to meet that so that I can give you these things. So God's promises, a lot of them have a condition, a premise connected with that. Let's look at that here. So here is the, the, the promise. Amazing. God says, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. That is God's promise. Now, if you just take this and run off with that and say, yes, I can ask whatever, 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 you name it, you name it, whatever, whatever I think about, whatever I feel about it, God's going to answer that. Well, that's not what it says. That's the promise. The promise is connected to a condition or a premise. And the condition is this. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then God says, aha, then you can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So you say, Pastor Mike, what does it mean to remain in Christ? Well, the next sentence speaks about that, qualifies that. To remain in Christ is to have God's words remain in you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you. God's word gets into your heart, gets into your mind. You receive God's word. You think about God's words. You cooperate with God according to his word. You live your life in accordance with God's word. Then God says, when you come and ask whatever you wish, it will be given to you. Now that whatever you wish, if God's word is in your heart, your thoughts, your goals, your aspirations will be in line with God's will and God's promises and God's purposes for your life. So you're not going to be mounting anything off outside the will of God. Your prayer request will be fueled, powered, motivated, encouraged by God's word that remains in you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever you want and it can be done unto you. Now write this down. Write this down. He, 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 right, here's, what, here's what the Bible teaches. 
in accordance with this portion of scripture. That God requires that we listen to him first before he listens to us. That if I don't pay attention to what God says in his word concerning my life, why should he pay attention to me? Why should he pay attention to me when I come and talk to God? When I ask God to do this in my life and God looks around and says, hey, you're not doing all these things that I've asked you to do in my world. Well, there's no way that God will meet that. And so one key condition for answered prayer is that we have an honest relationship with God. That we don't ignore God's word, but we put into practice the things that God says concerning our lives. Then God is motivated, compelled. The promise maker who is a promise keeper will then enact his promises in our life. So the starting point to have an honest relationship is that we align with God's word. Now, John, the apostle John in 1 John, his epistle gives us three qualifiers. He gives us three tests to be able to assess our relationship with God to make sure that we are honestly working with God. And these are three questions he wants us to use to evaluate how honest our relationship with and it make those tweaks, makes those changes be agreeable with God to try to get in line so that we can meet his prayer condition. Now, here's one of those, those evaluations that we've got to check in on ourselves uh, to help us shape up so that we can be on the same page. We've got one is this. We ask ourselves, have I refused to admit things that I've done wrong in the past? Have I refused? Now, this is on confessed sin. Has the Holy Spirit brought to mind some things that I've done in the past that I haven't asked God for forgiveness? Are there some things that I've ignored? Are there some things that, that, that I'm holding on to that is destroying my prayers that when God looks at that, it is not a motivator and incentive. It's not in line with God's will and God's character for him to answer my prayers. It, this may be an activity. It may be an attitude. It may be a habit that happen in our life or I'm still doing in us and that is really breaking the connection between us and God and when we try to cover things up when we try to paper it over when we say well all I have to do is come and worship and uh, and come and do this things God says stop 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 this has got to be dealt with uh, and when we cooperate with what the Holy Spirit is convincing us of that hey this is an area uh, of, of error in your life you've got to do something about that then God uh, when we come God will uh, then meet us where we are uh, and then help us fix it look at this amazing portion of scripture that speaks on this Psalm 66 verse 18 uh, it says if I have not confessed the sin in my heart the Lord will will not have listened to me. Now, this comes from David, David, King David, Prophet David, uh, a man that God calls a man after his own heart. And this is a guy who was blessed by God from a shepherd to a king, from nowhere to somewhere really big. Uh, but, you know, David, as close as God says, is a man after my own heart, really did some, some uncool things, some sinful things. But one of the things that God liked about David was that David was a great repentor. That when, when something went wrong in his life and uh, he, he, God was revealed to him that this is wrong, he will quickly, quickly come to God, confess his sin, repent, be remorseful about that, and then ask God to strengthen him to do away with that. And he tells us that if there is something in my life that is sin in my heart that I haven't confessed before, God says that God will not listen to me. Look at another one also from Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah speaking, inspired by God, Isaiah 59 too. It says, it's your sin that has cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he's turned away and will not listen anymore. And so half the time when we think the devil is doing this to us, our enemies are really trying to hurt us, that there's something external that's the reason why uh, breakthrough isn't happening in our life. God says, look, internalize that. That is you. That is us. There's something inward. There's something that is cutting off our prayers from God that is unconfessing. When these things are bubbling in our heart, when we read the word of God and God says this is what we should do and we haven't done, this is what we shouldn't do and we've done, we ought to just quickly come and waste no time, ask God for his forgiveness and tell him to empower you to do away with that. Then the floodgates will be open for you to have answered prayer. Uh, honest relationship comes uh, when we admit some of the things we've done wrong 
and are ready to turn uh, our back on it. Look at this one also. I like this from uh, King Solomon in Proverbs 28, 13. Proverbs 28, 13. He says, he or she, <coughs> excuse me, who covers their sins will not prosper. But <coughs> whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. How about that? That if you just paper it over, if you say, forget about it, if you say, well, you know, there are people who are doing worse things than I am, and you cover up your sins, it says, that is what will cause your prayer not to be answered. But when you come and you confess to God, confession is the gateway to blessing. Confession is the gateway to answered prayer. When you come and confess and forsake them, it says, God will have mercy on you. So what do we do? Knowing that one of the, 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 the ways to have a, a strong relationship with God, that is the door opener uh, to answer prayer, is confession. What should we do? Well, we should keep short accounts with God. We ought to come to God and say, God, the minute we, we realize that, hey, I've done something wrong, waste no time. Come and ask God because God is faithful. God is compassionate. God is merciful. God is the God of forgiveness. Look at what 1 John 1, 8 tells us. He says, if we say we aren't sinful, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. You see, I could fool you, but I can never fool God because God sees things and knows things. He knows what I've done. He knows the areas where, where I've messed up. He knows the areas where I've, I have violated his ordinance, I've broken his law and not comply with what he says he will do. And so it's better for us when, when these things come to light in our conscience. God gave us our conscience as the radar to be able to identify to us what's right and wrong. He's given us his Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, to convince us. He says, when that comes to mind, waste no time. Amen. Or else the truth is not in us. But here's the good news. Says God is faithful and reliable. God is a promise keeper and a promise maker. If we confess our sins, he says he will forgive them and cleanse us from everything that we've done wrong. And so we shouldn't wait a whole day, a week, a month, a whole year, and let things just fester and keep going on and on and on. It will block our prayers. We ought to come quickly and ask God to Forgive us. Confession, confession, my brother, my sister, is simply being honest with God. It's saying, God, you are right. I was wrong. That impatience, that pride, that envy, that jealousy, whatever it is, please forgive me. Uh, and when we come to God honestly, uh, God will hear and answer us. And he will cleanse us from our sin. Pave the way for uh, our prayers to be answered by Almighty God. That is the second way also we can evaluate uh, our honest meter with God. Here's what. We ask ourselves this question. Am I currently ignoring any of God's principles? Word of God is filled with principles, action steps about every area of our lives. Our parenting, uh, our financial life, our work life, our marriage life, uh, every area of our lives, our social life. Uh, God has given us uh, steps that he wants us to follow so that we'll be blessed by it. And when we ignore them, what it is is we're pushing God off. We're slamming the door on God's face, and that is not having an honest relationship with God. Uh, when God tells us to do something uh, that we know, and we dig our heels in, and we say, I'm not going to do this, or I'm going to keep doing this, when God's told us it isn't right, that becomes an area where God is waiting for us uh, to obey him, uh, before he answers our prayer. Look at this amazing portion of scripture. 1 John, 1 John 3, 21, 22. Notice the promise with the condition for answered prayer. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything uh, we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. It says, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And we receive from anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. Now, the promise is this. The promise is that, that, that we will receive from God anything we ask. Now, if you just run off with that verse and says, well, God says that whatever I ask him, I have the confidence that God is going to answer my prayer. Well, that's not what it says. That's not the totality of it. The full picture is this, that if our hearts don't condemn us, because we keep his commands and do what he pleases, then God will do what he says he will do. For us. 
That if, if, if we have the confidence that, man, I am living right by God. I'm doing everything I can. Empowered by the Holy Spirit to live in obedience, in compliance with God, what God says. In this very situation, in my marriage, in my finances, on the job, in the church, in the community, in my family. Everything that I'm doing that's in line with what God says. And I'm doing this honestly with humility and joy. Then it says, then where I'm asking for, God will do it. Now you say, wow, boy, that's a tall bar. That's a tall bar. It really is not. See, God doesn't demand perfection. He demands obedience. God wants us to obey him. Then out of a heart of gratitude for how far God has brought us. And, and anyone who's a child of God, you know God has done plenty good in your life. Out of, out of loving obedience to what the Lord has done for your life. He woke you up this morning. He's done great and awesome things. He's promised to do great and awesome things in your life. That, that God isn't through with you. That God, even right now, as I'm speaking and you're hearing me, God is working things out for your good. Out of that gratitude that we live our life in obedience to him, uh, God is saying, yes, then I'm going to bless you. Then I'm going to bless you. And I'm really going to lift you up. So one is... How, how do I have an honest relationship with God? I value, am I hiding something from God in my relationship? Am I doing what he wants me to do? Or am I ignoring any of his, his principles? The third way we evaluate our honest meter with God is this, is this. Do I really want God's will for my life? Do I really want to go God's way? Do I really, really or I'm just seeking this thing right here so that people will think I'm cool? Do I really want God to be on my, do I really want to be on God's side? Do I want to operate on God's purpose? Do I want God's will for my life? Now, here's what John, Apostle John tells us, 1 John 5, 14. So, notice this, the condition, the promise connected with the condition. Promise, promise. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything, he hears us. Now, that's not what it says. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. If we ask anything and God's going to hear us, then kaboom, it's going to happen. No. If we ask anything, that's a promise. According to his will, then God will hear us. And God said he's going to hear and answer us when, when we do this. When we seek to live in his will. And most Christians make a big mistake in prayer. We go around saying, God, is it your will that I ask for this? Is it your will? And that's not really nothing wrong with that. But God wants us to move to a higher level. Not, God, is it your will that I ask for this? But the real issue is, God, am I in your will as a person? Wanting to seek God's will in life. God, I want to be in your will. God, I want to live in your plan. I want to live in your purpose. I want to go your way. I want you to be... On your side. I want to be on, not God with us, but we with God. We want to go where God is. We want to be where he is. We want to cooperate with him. So that, 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 that elevated, surrounded, yielded life where we are living in God's will. And God says, this is the confidence we have. If you ask anything according to my will. That there is a desire of your heart to be able to want to live with God and do the things God wants you to do. That today God is doing big things. In this community, in this season of life, God is doing big things in this month. God is picking and choosing people. The Bible says the eye of the Lord looks to and fro, seeking for people he will use and bless. And you and I will do well if we want to be on God's side. If we want to raise our hands to, uh, to, to be agents in which God will move us alongside him, will be God's hands, God's feet, God's voice, uh, God, to, to be able to display the works that God wants to do in this season, in this community, in this life. Am I in God's will? Am I in God's will? Now, St. Augustine said this, which was a point of contention for many people because they just couldn't understand. St. Augustine just simplified this by saying, love God and do what you please. Love God and do what you please. Now, I just thought, wow, but that's, that's, that's not what the Bible says. But really, that's it. You think about this. If you really, really love someone with all your heart, you will want to please them. You will want to do what pleases them. 
You will want to take the actions that will bring joy and pleasure to them because you really love them and you want to be able to seek their pleasure. And so when we love God, as God says, love God with all your heart, soul, spirit, and mind, what will happen is that because of the love of God, we are motivated to seek the pleasure of God. We want our lives to make God smile. Love God. And do what you please because when you are loving God with your own heart, your heart has been changed. Your heart has been seared with the things that will bring pleasure to God, the will of God, the plan of God, the purposes of God. So you are motivated to live in line with God's will. So how do we answer this question to God? How do we do this? Do I really want God's will for my life? How do we want to live in line are we eager to do the things that God wants us to do? When he tells us something is his word, are we eager to be able to put into practice? Are we at a space in our lives when the Holy Spirit reminds us, when our conscience tells us uh, that this is uh, something we ought to do? We go ahead and do it even though we don't feel like doing this. Even though we feel like, man, that's going to be such a sacrifice. There's no one I know that's doing this. Are we at that space that we are ready to be able to come and confess our sins before God? Are we able to take on the things that God wants to do in our life? And are we at a place where we are seeking to live in the will of God? This is what my brother, my sister, is that honest media that God looks at and says, if I have an honest relationship with he, God, that would be a condition for answered prayer. Jesus lays out another prerequisite also for for, for him to answer our prayers, it's this, that we must have what? A forgiving attitude towards other people. Now, this is a big one. This is a big one. Have a forgiving attitude towards other people. My brother, my sister, more than any characteristic in the Bible, with the exception of ours, maybe faith, the number one thing that is related to prayer is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Over and over again, when Jesus teaches on prayer, he ties that with forgiveness. Why? Because nothing, hear this, my brother and my sister, will kill your prayers faster than resentment, bitterness, and grudges. Make a note of that. Nothing will kill your prayers faster than resentment, bitterness, and grudges. Look at what Jesus says on this note. Mark 11, 24 to 25. Again, note the promise with the condition. Promise with the condition. Jesus speaking. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying... If you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Now, if you just read up the first part, therefore I tell you, Jesus said, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it and it will be yours. And you just go off and you begin to spout your prayers to Almighty God. Ignoring the second part. God is saying, no, 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 no. Here is the conjunction that goes with that. Here is the tie into the first part. The promise that I've made that whatever you ask, believe in it shall be done. If you have faith that God is a prince, God is a miracle, and God is faithful in his ways, and you come and you pray and you count on God, you trust in God because he said it, he said it, he will bring it to pass. He says, but you've got to remember this also. And while you are praying, if you are convinced, if your conscience tells you, if the Holy Spirit reveals to you that you are holding a grudge against someone else, you better forgive them right there and then so that your Father in heaven will show you mercy and forgive your sins and honor your prayer. Amen. When you're holding a grudge, when you're nursing an ill feeling, when you're allowing bitterness to grow in your heart, God is teaching us that it will knock off your prayers. And maybe the reason, my brother and my sister, you haven't had answered prayer to that need, that request that you brought to God is this very reason. Bitterness, resentment, and grudges. Bitterness, resentment, and grudges. And God is saying this. He's saying this. One of the primary reasons why we don't see prayers to answer is because we allow bitterness to spring in our heart. And God is a relationship God. You notice that in the Lord's Prayer, there is no singular pronouns in there. They are all they, 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 uh, in there. They are all plural pronouns. No singular pronoun. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation. 
Our Father in heaven, deliver us from evil. Forgive us our sins. All those, all those are plural pronouns. God is a relationship God. He's a God of unity, God of reconciliation, God of oneness. And God wants us to cooperate with him so that he'll use us to bring unity in this divided, broken world. And he says, I will reward you with answered prayer when you become my emissary, when you become my conduit, my accessory to bring healing and reconciliation where there is division. And so forgive one another as I've forgiven you. As I've loved you, go love one another. He says, love one another as I've loved you. He says, when you, when you remember that's, that you hold in a garage, somebody did something that is causing sourness, heaviness on your heart, where you can tolerate them, he says, let it go. Forgiveness is not because what they did was right. Forgiveness is not because what they did didn't hurt you. Forgiveness is because God says it, and you want to be a, 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 an a obedient child of God to obey what he says. Forgiveness is allowing God to do something in your heart. Allow God to use the situation that perhaps was injurious to you for God to use that as a catalyst to be able to see his mercy, his compassion, his forgiveness, and his healing. Forgiveness is for, is for you to heal you. That, that you, you are in a state where you, your feelings are hurt. You realize this, that you have an issue with somebody and all of a sudden it changes you. And now you just hurt, you wounded, your food doesn't taste right, you can't sleep well at night. Uh, you just all oh, change your emotions and your perception to life. It's, for some, it's like because of something that's done, I won't talk to this person, I won't go there anymore, I won't, I won't do nothing for this person. All of a sudden, you have retracted, you have recalled. And the place of progress and blessing is not to run away when something goes bad. God is saying, use the tool of forgiveness so that I can heal you. I can recover you. I can get you in a place of wholesomeness and also use this element of forgiveness to bring about unity and reconciliation. Other than that, 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 that bitterness, that uh, uh, grudge, that resentment will become like a poison to poison you. Look at what uh, James and, and, and Paul uh, 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 wrote together, collaborating to, to write the, the book of Hebrews, inspired by the Holy Spirit, tells us about. Look at Hebrews 12, 15. He says what? Watch out that no bitterness take root among you. For as it springs up amongst you, it causes deep trouble, hurting many in their spiritual lives. Amazing portion of scripture. He says this is what it can do. Bitterness can become something that is so, so, so rooted in you. We all know it. He says you can't change a fruit without getting to the root. If the fruit, fruit is bad because the root is off, because the root is rotten. And God is saying there's something in there that's not causing root to happen. And perhaps it could be bitterness. It could be unforgiveness. It could be uh, grudges. It could be, 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 be resentment. That is how born in your heart. He says it will cause deep trouble. And it's going to hurt you spiritually. For many, you think, well, it's the devil that is doing this. It's my enemies. It's my neighbor. It's this person. It's that person that is really harming me or doing this. God is saying, stop, stop, stop. Take personal ownership. There is something that is going to array in your spiritual life. And the reason that is, is bitterness, resentment, grudges. And the way you fix that is forgiveness. Is forgiveness that we must have a forgiving attitude towards other people that will unclog, unclog the wheel, will, will, will unchain that which is blocking our connection with Almighty God. All of a sudden, the problem that I had with you is now blocking my prayer life. It's now causing deep trouble and spiritual havoc in my life. And the way to disengage from that is in forgiveness. Oh, many, many times, my brother, my sister, this, I'm coming to God, I'm writing a message, I'm praying, I'm meditating, I'm reflecting. And something's happened between my wife and I and, uh, and others that I've dealt with. And the whole, I can't move forward until I, I ask for forgiveness from God and reach out to those people. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Many in this church that you will attest that you've gotten a text message from me or a call from me. And the others on my team that I will reach out to them, that I will 
ask for forgiveness or I'll offer forgiveness perhaps for something that I did or something that they did uh, that, that wasn't cool. And that's the key to moving on with God. That's the key to getting to that place. It could really hamper you. Bitterness, resentment, grudges uh, could block your prayers. Is there any reason that Jesus tied that in with teaching us the, the tenets of the Lord's Prayer? He told us, he says, come and pray like this. Forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And when you get to the latter part of this, this, this prayer, it just triggers your mind. Oh, have I forgiven my brother, my sister, my friend, my neighbor, my wife, my child, my co-worker, my church member of something that they did? If not, right there and then I'm being inspired and encouraged uh, to uh, forgive them so that God will give me ease of heart. God will open up the gateway so that my prayers will be heard and answered by Almighty God. And so re- bitterness and resentment uh, towards one another will block our prayers, will block our prayers. Peter puts it this way. Uh, and Peter uh, is speaking uh, in terms of marriages, but this uh, goes beyond marriages. It's, uh, uh, we can play into this uh, message from Peter inspired by the Holy Spirit to all our relationships. And so not just husband and wife, it could be parents and their children and vice versa to your neighbors, uh, to your customers, to your bosses, uh, to your church members, uh, to your colleagues, your friends, your family members. In all kinds of relationships, here's what God says. Husbands in the same way be considered as you live with your wives and treat them with respect so that nothing will hinder your prayers. So parents uh, in the same way be considerate with your children, be considerate with your customers, be considerate with your clients, be considerate with your neighbors, your church members, your friends, your family members, be, con- be, be, be considerate with your bosses because, uh, and treat them with respect. He says why? So that nothing will hinder your prayers. And God speaks very emphatically. He says this harmony in the home, in the church, on the job, in our community, in our family will block our prayers. Anything that is causing tension and conflict that we are holding on to, God says, take the ownership, take the lead, take the initiative, and, 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 and offer forgiveness or ask for forgiveness. Take that initiative. When someone has wronged you, offer forgiveness to them. When you have wronged someone, ask for forgiveness. And what it will do is that it will what? It will open things up. It will clog the wheel with your relationship with God so that your prayers can get through and God can hear and answer them. Let me give you an illustration with that. Now, we even see that in, our, in all our relationships, right? Here's a parent who is mad at their kid because their kid did something wrong. You've got your grandchild or, or a kid and, and they know you're mad with them and so forth. What happens? What happens? What happens? child is there, yes, the child is sorry for what they've done and so forth. The key important thing is the child feels bad that that, that relationship has been marred, has been broken. And on, until, until that forgiveness is offered and received, many times you have the child come in and plead and beg, will you forgive me? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I remember when my kids were young, they'll say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Say I forgive you, say I forgive you, Papa. Say I forgive me, say I forgive you know, and they, they, they want to receive the affirmation of forgiveness. And when that happens, it, it unclocks the wheel. It restores the relationship. It gets things back together again. Imagine that with our relationship with God. As a pastor, I've been in several, se- several counseling situations where we may have, you know, family members, friends, couples, that there's been a, 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 a block, a tension, that they are on, on separate sides. It's been going on for a while, and, and we get them together in one room, and you look for an area, an area of, an area of cooperation, an area of purpose. What are the things that are important to both of you in this relationship? And you, 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 you get that uncovered that, you know, we have more together than that separates us. And they begin to look at things with a fresh lens and so forth. And here's what really is the kicker, is the catalyst, is the thing that really sparks reconciliation. And we encourage them to be able to offer forgiveness or ask for forgiveness. And when one person really jumps at that and understands the value or the power of forgiveness, and they say, honey, I'm sorry, or child, I'm sorry, or mom, I'm sorry, or so-and-so, I'm sorry for what I've done. Offering that forgiveness begins to free them up. Offering forgiveness and then receiving forgiveness. Even in situations where I've been in where the other person is not ready to receive that forgiveness yet. But, but, but... But, but when that one person goes ahead and understands and says, you know, I forgive you for what you did. 
I forgive you for how you hurt me. I forgive you for this. What a freeing moment. And it opens the door. It's the beginning step for true unity, acceptance, re- reconciliation to occur. And God is saying this, that for your prayers to be answered, we've got to have a forgiving attitude with others. We don't push it under the rug. We don't say what's done is done. And but we come to God and we say, God... Help me deal with this situation. Give me a heart of love, of sympathy, of acceptance, of forgiveness for my brother, my sister. And when that happens, oh, what a freeing way to live. What a freeing way to live. And it opens the door for big things to happen in our life for the glory of Almighty God and for our good. God wants to hear our prayers. God wants to bless us. God wants to do great and awesome things in our lives if we let him. But it says here are two conditions that you've got to honor. Have an honest relationship with me. How do we assess honest relationship with God? It's one of confession. We're going to do wrong in life. But when we're wrong in the Holy Spirit or our conscience, brings it to our memory. We've got to keep short accounts with God and ask God to forgive us. Confession is the gateway to improve our relationship with God. If there are areas where we are ignoring God's principles and it comes to life, we've got to jump right at that. That's another way that we strengthen our relationship with God. Also, we want to seek God's will, God's will for our lives. The God, I want to do your will. God, I want to go away. Oh, and also, well, here's another thing that we've got to have a forgiving attitude. Forgiving attitude. Uh, with our constituents, our family members, our friends, our church members, our co-workers, our neighbors. Uh, when we do that, God looks at us and says, yes. Or he says we should love one another as he has loved us. He tells us, just as I've forgiven you, just as I've forgiven you, we should also go ahead and forgive others. Because if we don't forgive those who've wronged us, the Bible tells us that God will not forgive us. But if we forgive, God will look upon that uh, and also forgive us. In other words, he and answer our prayers and bring breakthrough to us. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is effective. Prayer is the vehicle in which God blesses us. Here's the portion of scripture that we began with. Let's end on this note. Psalm 91 verse 14 and 16. He says, when they call on me, I will answer how. God says, I will restore those who love me. I will protect those who trust in me. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reveal, uh, reward them with long life. And I'll give them my salvation. Oh, my brother, my sister. God wants to do big things in our lives. But he says, two conditions. Number one, get to a place where we honestly, honestly, honestly have a strong relationship with God. Don't go short with God. Go long, go deep with God. Secondly, also, in the area where there's an inevitable division and conflict that will occur in all your relationships. Live in forgiveness. Live forgiven by God. Live in forgiveness with others. And that will become the catalyst to answer your prayer. Next week, I'll touch on three other conditions that God tells us to be able to help answer our prayers. But my brother, my sister, oh, before we leave here, would you assume a prayer posture? Ask God today to deal with your heart. Ask God to strengthen the bones that he has with you. Ask God to get you into that spiritual connection deep and strong so that nothing will hinder your prayers. And while you're praying, ask the Holy Spirit to expose any bitterness, any resentment, any area where you're holding grudges, any area where your heart is hurt or sour uh, towards something that you did or someone did to you and therefore there is a conflict in that relationship. Why don't you ask God to forgive you, ask God to soften your heart towards that person so that you look to them with mercy, compassion, forgiveness the way God has done for you. Pray wherever you are. Oh, our God. Oh, God, you created us for yourself. And right now, in accordance with your word, I pray, oh, God, your people today will have a strong bond with you. Your people will unite with you in committed relationship. That today, your people, Lord God Almighty, will see the value with standing firm, making you a priority in all their ways, seeking you first above all things. In every area that today you've exposed to us, whether it be it on confessing or 
or areas where we are challenged to put your principles to work in our hearts or in our lives or areas of our lives where we are not dug in to pursuing your will for our lives today oh let there be freedom oh god that we will be loyal to you that each and every one of the son of my voice will be in a place of committed walk with you lord god almighty but i pray for healing for every heart that is wounded everyone lord god almighty that is sour towards something that has been done or said by anyone to them and as a result of that there's conflict in that relationship lord god almighty heal broken hearts right now lift up lord god almighty the head of our people oh fill their hearts with the joy of the lord fill them with a the peace that surpasses all understanding god my lord give them your strength give them your love lord god almighty to enable them give them patience to deal with difficult people give them perseverance to hang in there even when the going is tough be the lifter of their head fill their hearts with hope today oh god my lord oh jesus and you empower them to offer forgiveness oh lord god almighty and to ask for forgiveness where it's needed in your lives to unclog uh, the pipeline so that their prayers will be answered Meet your people where they are. Bless them, mighty God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, my brother, my sister. If you've not received Christ as your, your Savior, why wait? Give your heart to God right now. Let him come into your life. The Bible says this very clearly. It says, the eye of the Lord is upon the righteous. And his ear is attentive to their prayer. You know, God is committed to his children. Those who are in a saving relationship with him. He says, as many as believed in him and received him, he gave them the power to become children of God. There are certain exclusive rights that only belong to children of God. Will you today take God at his word, receive his invitation to become one of his children? He's already paved the way. He's died as a full payment of all your sins to open the door for you to run into his arms today. Receive his preference sacrifice the payment of your sin and today become a child of God you say how let me pray a prayer uh, with you today the prayer is meaningless without your strong attitude believe in that pray with me this prayer with all your heart uh, and believe in that and God will save you pray like this Jesus I thank you for dying for my sins thank you for paying the price that demonstrated that you love me so much with your own life. So today, I receive your perfect sacrifice as the payment for my sin. Jesus, please come in my life and save me. As much as I know, I can't run my own life. But you can do more with my life than I can. And so from here on, become my life manager. Take control of my life. Help me to love you and to obey you. And when the day comes that I leave this world, you come and take me to heaven where you are so I'll be with you forever. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, now let me pray for you. All of us. Oh God, today we thank you for your word. I pray this week that you send your blessing unto your people. I pray today that open doors will come upon your people. I pray today that you crush the enemy under their feet. I pray today, God, my Lord, that you be the lifter of their lives. I pray today that you will supplant the life of your people with supernatural power that will go further than they can by themselves. You were praying, answer God. I pray that as you have promised, that you will do exceedingly abundantly above, more than they can ask, think, or imagine. God bless your people. Take them high and above where they can go. Thank you, Lord. Do big things in their life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. My brother, my sister, thank you for joining us. May I encourage you to sow a seed, an offering in Favor Life Church. You can do that online. Uh, right there in the portal that you are, you're going to see you can uh, give to us through Cash App. Uh, Favor Life uh, is our call letters. If you have the Cash App uh, app, uh, go ahead and, and, and use that to be able to sow a seed uh, to our church. You can also use Zell. You have that information right there. Favor Life Church is how you find us. You can also give by Tesk, uh, or if you are on our, on our online portal, uh, just click that uh, blue button that says Give Online, and you can uh, give using your card, either credit or debit. Uh, you can also use your checkbook, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Microsoft Pay, 
uh, all those uh, great ways. You can also use your checkbook, uh, your account, your checking account or saving account. Plug that information in, and that will be a secure, convenient way to be able to give to support God's work. Again, thank you for joining us. God.